people into rural Alabama, it's got to be open season. May I have a word? There's no word to be had. The people! The people! The people! The people! The people! The people! Two hats today? Yes, sir. Pleasure. Dude, you can do that. Though. Yeah, exactly. You know. First of all, man, congratulations. I feel like I should have came in here just with a round of applause. Thank you for such a great job on screen. So congratulations. Thank you for that, man. Um, I'm like more than honored to be a part of this. This is like one of my most fulfilling moments in my life as an artist, actor, um, and human being. Cause you know, Dr. King. And the struggle is something that I'm very much connected to. And to be like, I feel like when we do art like this, it's an extension of what they did. We, we're, we're keeping that, that dream going. Like, you know, there was a line in the movie, she said something along the lines of, you know, our ancestors came across the Atlantic Ocean on slave ships. And, yeah. you know, they were able to defy the odds and survive that, and that same blood is within us. Yes. So a part of that is in you, and I feel like that comes across through your music. So how do you feel inspired or encouraged when it comes to thinking back on, you know, who you're representing? Well, I mean, you know, I come from the south side of Chicago. It's a rich history in black culture, you know, and it was discovered by a black man, Chicago, the city. So wow. the more I learn my history, the more I have, like, love for myself, love for my community, and I love others. It's not like, you know, you can't, you can't just love, you can love your, your people and your community and love others too. So um, getting to know like different figures, whether it's Nat Turner, whether it's um, Malcolm X, whether it's Dr. King um, or Harriet Tubman, it just gives me more information on who I am. and. Um, allows me to know that we can accomplish anything and to know the lineage that I come from. My father used to always say that to me, your bloodline is strong, so, you know, I'm part of the bloodline. And, and to be able to, to know that gives me fuel for when things are difficult. Right. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just um, grateful to be uh, a black man in, in America today. Absolutely. You, know, you mentioned two things. One, you mentioned your father. I want to come back to that and talk to you about the importance that he had in your life. But you also mentioned history. And history has a way of repeating itself. And the timing of this movie, I feel like, is very important. You know, it took place 50 years ago, but sadly, I saw some similarities in some of the things that were taking place 50 years ago that we still see happening today. Yes. So what are your thoughts about just the timing of the film and the release? We've come a long way, but we got a long way to go as, as far as, you know, the change in this country and some of the racial prejudices that exist, yeah. some of the abuse of power. Um, we obviously feel like when you look at some of the scenes in Selma, it's not a far um, picture from what you see in Ferguson, Missouri. And just, the, you know, that's one specific, you can go directly to that and say, you know that like a young man being killed at the hands of an officer or someone in authority, um, like the state troopers that shot Jimmy Lee Jackson, or, you know, the police officer that shot Michael Brown, it's, right. it's not that big of a difference in situation. This is 50 years later, and we're still fighting for justice. And the people of Ferguson are doing it in a nonviolent way, which is very important. Um, and very important that we figure out what we need. Like, and I think Selma is so relevant because it's, it's art, it's a film, but it also can affect change. Like it, it can open the eyes of some teenager that's like, man, they did all that and I can be a part of something this strong and have a value to my life that really means something beyond just my Instagram or beyond just, you know, right. my Twitter followers, yeah. you know, it's like. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because as a result of the Michael Brown shooting, there was a huge backlash within, or, you know, the African-American community rose up and was furious. 
Um, but it seems when it comes to the music and the accountability that we have when it comes to our lyrics, there's not that same sense of you know, um, responsibility or accountability uh, when it comes to what we listen to. So being a music artist, like what are your thoughts on, you know, I don't want to cause any beef, but you know, you got songs like the Schmurder dance and Schmoney dance and stuff like that. What are your thoughts about that being glorified, but we kind of turn a blind eye on what it's actually saying? Well, you know, music is, is it's a different, it's different forms of expression. Everybody has their interpretation of what music is fresh to them. Um, they have their taste on what they're going to listen to. I think hip hop specifically and just music in general is like, it allows the artists to express themselves. If somebody wants to do, you know, the smurder, then that's what they do. Like, I can't, you know, it's hard for me to tell somebody, yo, you should rap like this, or you right. should create a song like this. I think the, the important thing is to acknowledge that it's not only, it's not only that music, it's also other music that offers other things. Like we, you know, we got a song on the, at the end of Selma called Glory. Great song. And it, thank you. And it's, Myself and John Legend is about really like this this film and also what took place in Selma, but how it's really going not going on now. And it's about the fight and winning the fight. Like, and the fight is not like a race thing. The fight is like about like overcoming injustice. The fight is about like letting love prevail, fighting for peace. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, you know, so music does exist like that. I think other artists have a lot to say, like like when well, you go to a Kendrick Lamar. So that's why I don't focus on just one aspect because, you know, you can people can only be who they are. I can't ask, you know, young thug to to rap about if if, if that's not what he wants to do and that's who right. he is. So I just let each artist express who they are and just, you know, present the whole spectrum. You know, you've always been a, a positive you know, light within the hip hop community. You've always, you know, f you, you know, spoke on things that might give somebody a different perspective on how they should kind of just look at life. Yeah. What are your thoughts on just how hip hop is kind of the direction in which it's moving in? And do you feel like you have any um, power to kind of help to skew the just the direction of it back to something more positive? Well, hip hop is moving in like it, it evolves. It, it constantly grows, and it's. And it's going to change. It's moving where the youth are moving. To be honest, the youth like lead the hip hop in many ways. But then again, you still have artists like myself who've been around in hip hop for a long time, putting out fresh music, new yeah. sounds. And so, what I believe I provide is a different aspect. I did an album called Nobody Smiling, and, it, and I connected with like artists like Little Herb from Chicago and an artist named Dreezy. And, you know, I brought some of the younger artists who have their perspective, and I offered a different perspective, but it's still like, I don't overlook the fact that I was them at one point, you know, like me, and I come from the same place they come from, and I'm not the, the person or the artist that's going to sit there and, and really judge what they do. Right. I just, like, write from a perspective of always giving, like, a voice for the people is what I do, and then I always right from perspective that at some point it's going to be some hope at the end. You know, it's going to be hope. I, right. I never just want to tell the problem and not offer any solutions. Okay. Whether the hope is just, whether the word is just motivation, inspire yourself, it's, it's going to be that. So, I mean, I think that I don't have a problem with, with hip hop being where it is because that's, you know, it's always a voice for what's going on with young people feel. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and it's dope that I, you can get artists like me and Nas and Jay-Z that, that still bring something to the youth and, and they feel connected. So I, I don't have a problem with hip hop. Okay. Now you mentioned earlier, you mentioned your father. And then you just mentioned yourself, Nas, and Jay-Z, who are in a sense kind of like the fathers of the current state of hip hop or the current hip hop as we know it today. So in what ways do you feel like you're able to impart some fatherly characteristics upon the youth? It's, in the way that you know your father may have imparted stuff on you. Well, one thing that my father did that I really loved was my father always let me know his flaws. He never acted as the perfect human being, and I think you know it's important for me as if if I'm going to like get get the 
the younger generation to to understand and then I gotta also present the truth. Yeah. Like I'm not a perfect human being, um, but but I also have to present like what I know to do to be integrity in in music, to be creative, to have music that has substance. I gotta present the truth, mm -hmm. and with that it just has to be. To me, with hip hop, man, if you stay in tune with the people, if you really connected with with the people, you really gonna be able to align yourself with what's going on in hip hop. And if I, if I do that, I can always offer them some type of leadership. And part of leadership is listening. Like it's not always like, I got the answers. Right. You know, some of it is just like, what's up? Yeah, let me hear that. All right, cool, just showing you care. Because I don't have all the answers. <laughs> and, um, but I will offer everything that I do have. And some of that is just guidance. Um, some of that's just embracing. Like I felt the the difference this album when I embraced um, the, young, the younger yeah. artists, the younger fans just was like, oh man, common embracing us, you know, and it's Absolutely. just, and they actually appreciated my music more. You know, what's one change that you would like to see done somewhere in the world? It doesn't have to be within hip hop, just one change that common would like to see take place. Well, I would like to see spirituality valued more. like. I would like to see schools not be afraid to to say, oh, talk about God. Um, I would like to see like the creator be put more into the if you know the families and communities in whatever way we can get you know spirituality there because I, I'm I'm a believer that you know if you believe in in a higher power and you work to act towards that it will direct your life in the right direction. You know, you you will have some morals and and um, values to live by and have a, a, a compass, as they say, you know, and a conscience about what you're doing because if you really believe in, in the higher power, you'll know that like the higher power is in each and every individual. So I think spirituality and, and and the education of spirituality is like everything. Like my daughter's been going, like her, her school she goes to, they meditate, and it's a you know it's a school based, it's an all girls school based on um, Christianity. But they don't like n knock other spiritual practices. They like say mantras that like remind me of Buddhist thoughts, and I feel like you know instead of just focusing on religions, focusing on I would say focus on spirituality, I think that would help out towards the violence that I've seen going on in Chicago, towards um, the, the structure of families that's been damaged, you know. Yeah. What are your thoughts about the structure of family? Because, I mean, you have had a father, but, you know, a lot of times nowadays the majority of young African-American men don't. Yeah. So in what ways do you feel like that has hurt our community, or in what ways would you like to see that change? Yeah, well, I, I would encourage each and every individual that may not be, if you're not with, you know, as a man, if you're not with the mother of your child, then you still are present in that child's life and know that just your presence means something. And, yeah. uh, you know, just, I think having a, a, a father figure in the home is very important. And if, possible, you know, that, that would always help the family, you know, and just communication within a family is, is, is super important, but just seeing men, like, that really took care of themselves and, yeah. and were men, that, that, that taught me more how to be a man, yeah. so it's, it's very important, and, and if, with, as you said, there's a lot of kids out there that don't have men in their lives, and some of them don't even have, a, like, a, a solid mother in their lives, right. you know, through the drugs and and you know, being like in, in poor situations and mother always working. So that's when you hope that other family members and community can step in and provide the children with great examples. Because my uncle was one of the first persons that um, showed me as a man just how to do certain things. Right. So, you know, the community does have to step in at times. Yeah. And, and I think that's, we gotta look at each child and say, man, that I have a connection to this child, so I gotta offer he or, he or she something that's inspirational and get them some some 
some foundation. Yeah. You know, you mentioned spirituality earlier, and uh, you also mentioned community. And this film, I feel like, has an underlying sense of spirituality all throughout it. There's several Bible verses that are mentioned, and uh, Dr. King in the film, played by David Oyewolo, was, you know, he prayed numerous amounts of times. So mm -hmm. in, in what way do you feel like that spirituality then kind of helped to, help to keep them nonviolent? Because there was a lot of times I'm sure they wanted to rise up. Oh, man. They, you know they wanted to rise yeah. up. And um, they just made the rise up be more of a, a nonviolent rise. They, they knew that the rise up was going to have to be some for them to truly rise up, that they, they couldn't couldn't like it couldn't be a violent thing it couldn't be like a physical rise um spirituality was the rise and it provided a comfort it provided um a place to go when you're in the most painful times it provided them some type of healing some type of understanding that they could lean on something that was beyond just their physical bodies and and it, it does it for me now, it does it for a lot of people now, but it really was significant for the people during the time of, of the civil rights. That's why they were singing church hymns. And right. a lot of the meetings took places in church. The church was an important part because God was an important part of the movement and they yeah. always relied on God, you know, and always knew God is on our side. They knew that they would prevail somehow, some way. Some soldiers may be lost in the, in the, in the war, but they knew that they would win the war with God on their side. And right. that happened back in the days of slavery. You know, people yeah. would sing those songs, sing yeah. spirituals, because that's what got them through the day. You know, again, you, you mentioned what got them through during, during their eras, you know, 50 years ago. And you also mentioned that spirituality and, and God has kind of been taken out of schools and just young people's you know lives in general so yeah. there's a there's a climate in this country that's it's heated right now you know there's yeah. something that's brewing within the fabric of this country yeah. so with spirituality not being there do you feel like there's still a way for us to peacefully resolve this or do you feel like there's going to be some sort of violent you know i mean i happening? think i think it's definitely ways to peacefully resolve it um communication and acknowledgement like some of the best times I felt myself grow as an individual was when I acknowledged that I was fearful, that I was yeah. jealous, that I was whatever the, you know, the situation. Man, people in the country got to acknowledge this racial prejudice, Absolutely. prejudices that exist. Fortunately for us, the youth don't have that as much. They grow growing up in a different like way. Hip hop is even unite, help to unite a lot of nationalities. But then again, it's just the times is different. But it, some of the people that have been in power and have come from those eras, it's hard to unlearn some of those things. So, and when those things are not put out on the table and you may be acting away towards somebody because, and you don't know, it's in your subconscious, you acting that way because they're a certain color, then you got to figure out what's the problem and figure out like, why is that? and maybe do your best to resolve it. And I think that's where like we can help beyond, you know, beyond spirituality is the communication and acknowledgement and just really putting everything out on the table. Well, you put everything out on the table in this role. Your character, James Bevel, he was said to be, you know, a father of the civil rights era, and I feel like you embody that character amazingly. So congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Uh, everybody, make sure you go check out this film, Selma, in theaters, December 25th. You're going to love it. Common, great job. We look thank forward you. for more from you. And again, thank you. Appreciate it. That's a uh, good job, man. Good job. Thank you. Thank you.